Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next module of the Evolutionary Design Methods course. Today we will look into methods for multi-objective optimization. In contrast to the last time where we have had an uh, optimization problem with one objective, one fitness function, today we will look into problems with more than one fitness functions. As you can remember, Last time we used the example of a minimal enclosing circle that shall enclose a random point cloud in a two-dimensional surface. Um, we used the Galapagos optimizer to find the center point of a circle um, that encloses all points but has the minimal area. As you can see on the right side, um, we computed the fitness landscape. So we see where the center point will be located to um, have the smallest circles that enclose all points. So these are the blue areas in our fitness landscape. Um, today, for multi-objective problems, we need at least two fitness functions. Therefore, um, on the left-hand side, I added another criteria and this is visualized by another fitness landscape that you can see here in addition. And this second function or the second objective is that the center point of the minimal enclosing circle shall be as close as possible to the center of the point cloud. So we compute the center of all points, so the average x and y coordinate and our enclosing circle shall have its center as close as possible to this area, uh, to this center point of the point cloud. As you can see in the image of the fitness landscape, the two objectives, um, they don't seem to conflict with each other since the blue areas where we have the smallest circles on the one fitness landscape and which uh, and the center point of the circle that is closest to the center of the point cloud on the second um, fitness landscape that has these um, circles around the center. Um, the blue areas, they are more or less at the same location. So we can assume that we find one optimal solution that fits both uh, that fulfills both objective values in the best way. On this, in this diagram, you can see the objective space. So this is from uh, for another problem, but in general, it may look like very similar. The main aspect that you can see here is that if we minimize both criteria, um, the optimal solution is near to zero for both. Um, objectives and this can be found for problems that are non-conflicting. The more interesting problems and the reason for using um, the multi-objective optimization methods that we will consider in the following are problems that are conflicting with, with each other. So in this example that you see um, on the slide with the um, decision-making problem, which car I want to buy, we have a conflict that um, is caused by two objectives. One objective that I have for buying a new car is that it shall be as cheap as possible. And the second objective is that my car um, shall be as comfortable as possible. But um, as the illustration shows, um, it's not possible to find a car that is very cheap and very comfortable. I can find a very cheap car, one objective. This would be the car marked with the number one. Or I can find a very comfortable car, that's the car at location two. And in between, along the curve, A, B and C, these may be three cars that are a little bit more expensive, but not that 
comfortable as the most comfortable car. So these are compromise solutions, so trade-offs that we can find between these two um, compromise or the two extremes. But um, as mentioned, there is no optima for both criteria. So all the compromises, they are equally good. And that's the important aspect. So there are none of these um, solutions, none of these trade-offs is better than the others. Which is the better one needs to be defined by higher level information or by your personal preference. Um, for example, you may say, um, I select a car that shall reflect my social status or a car that shall be environmental friendly, so um, consuming less CO2 or something like this. This may help you to find the solution that fits best, but these are criteria that are not included in the computation, not included in these two objectives that reflect only comfort and costs. Um, considering our example problem with the minimal enclosing circle for our point cloud, we can now change one of the objectives, so we can invert it, um, in order to get a conflicting situation. Um, as you can see here on the left hand side, um, I inverted the objective that the center point shall be as close as possible to the center of the point cloud. Now um, my objective is that the center of my minimal enclosing circle shall be as far away as possible from the center of the point cloud. So it shall be at the edge or at the border of the point cloud. This is clearly a conflicting um, criteria as you can see in these colors on um, the fitness functions. So at the one fitness function describing the center point for the minimal enclosing circle that is the smallest circle, there the center point would be more or less in the middle. And in the other case, blue areas represent the better ones, the center point for a circle that is far away from the center of the point cloud is of course at the edge. So the blue um, areas in this fitness landscape are at the border. So they are now conflicting. And now we have different possibilities to deal with this conflicting criteria. One is um, the so-called preference-based multi-objective optimization. That's an approach where um, you formulate your fitness functions and then you weight them. So you um, define a preference for this or that objective. And based on these preferences, on these weightings for your objective, you can compute a, sum, a summarized fitness function. So in the end, you make, you create one fitness function out of a set of fitness functions or in our case out of two fitness functions. So you can say for example that um, the fitness function A has double of the priority so this gets the rating 2 compared to the other fitness function that get the rating 1. And by um, changing these ratings you will navigate on this trade-off curve. So depending on which criteria you prioritize you end up at a different location on this curve on the very right hand side at the bottom. You see the curve in a small version um, and imagine you set one criteria to zero then you get one extreme solution and if you set the other criteria with the weighting to zero then you get the other extreme solution. Remembering the cars you get either the most comfortable one or the cheapest one. And all weightings or combinations of weightings in between will get uh, will result in some compromises in some trade-off solutions. I've shown here on the other hand side the implementation in Grasshopper, um, which we will consider after this lesson. We will look into the example using Grasshopper and creating a preference-based multi-objective function. For the 
multi-objective optimization, the ideal version would be to have all possible compromises computed for you in order to show you what are your options and offering them to you so that you can select based on the higher level information um, for other aspects, other criteria that you may apply. So that's illustrated in this diagram um, where you first compute all compromises on this um, Pareto curve on the on all trade-offs. So this requires a completely different approach and we use our population of our evolutionary algorithm to populate this curve, to distribute each other, um, to distribute the variants of the population on this curve. And this has a few advantages because at the single criteria optimization, um, you don't know at the moment when you set the preferences what the exact consequences may be. So imagine comparing comfort against costs. These are two very complete, uh, these are completely different measures. And in the end, you have to normalize them somehow. You have to define the maximum and minimum of comfort to have a similar scale of these two measures. And then you say, okay, one is, all right, my priority would be the double, double of the comfort criteria in contrast to the costs or the other way around. But what this really means is only clear if you see all possible variants. So you would need to test all the different preferences that are possible to show you the solutions for your optimization. And this is done automatically by the ideal multi-objective optimization method that we will consider in the next theory lesson. But in before, we will look into the example of how we can deal with um, the preference-based optimization because sometimes this is sufficient, it's fast, it's simpler, and um, you can create meaningful or satisfying results with this method. So let's look into the example.